Hey guys, what's going on? Spipperix here, back with another LEGO video, and today we're looking at 10 more LEGO sets that break the rules. Now, after getting tons of requests from you guys to make a sequel to my original video on my channel that has now become one of my most viewed videos, I decided that it was time to do some research and find more sets, and that I did. To qualify, a LEGO set that breaks the rules must either have an instruction booklet error, an error on the set box artwork or product images, or it could just have a very obscure mistake that quite obviously was not supposed to be discovered by consumers nor LEGO fans. If you enjoyed today's video, please take two seconds to hit the like button down below, and also I have two bonus sets I'll show you guys at the end of this video with some crazy errors. You guys won't want to miss them, so stay tuned for the entire video. Starting off this video is the Darth Vader transformation set. Due to an error in the editing of the product images, this 2017 LEGO Star Wars set gave us a very intriguing look into how product images are shot and edited. Now we've all seen the product images that LEGO produces for their sets with this white background that focuses on the build and the minifigures. Now the minifigures themselves, as from this Star Wars set, we can see are propped up on these disc pieces. And so from this product image here, it appears that the editor forgot to remove these individual disc pieces that were propping up these minifigures, allowing them to pose in different positions. Now this is interesting because obviously these four pieces do not come in the set. And so somebody could see this image and say, hey, why aren't those in my set? Well, LEGO eventually figured out their mistake and edited them out, and so this is the image you'll see if you look on their website right now. However, certain websites you'll still see the discs in this outdated image. Now something really interesting I want to point out is that you can see the reflection of the minifigure in the disc themselves, as well as the surrounding photo shoot area, which is, you know, that's pretty cool to see. Up next is a LEGO City set from 2011 called the Police Helicopter. Now this is slightly less coveted than the Rescue Helicopter, however this set has a very interesting mistake. Keep in mind how many minifigures are in this set. There are four total minifigures, three of which are policemen, one of which is a crook. And if you look at this second instruction booklet, you'll notice that if you count off the amount of policemen minifigures you see, there are three obvious ones, but there's also one in the cockpit, therefore there's four. Wait a second, there's only three police minifigures in this set. I mean, I guess you could argue that the minifigure in the helicopter is additionally placed in the blue section in order to just simply show off the minifigure more. But at the same time, I mean, part of the helicopter itself is on the blue part, and that is obviously part of the set. So all of a sudden, you're looking at this image thinking that there are four police minifigures, and yet for some reason, you only got three in the set. I don't know, it seems a little bit misleading, but at the same time, just wanted to share it with you guys because I found it really interesting when I first discovered this. Up next, I think it's time to address the thumbnail image you most likely clicked on whenever you were going to watch this video. That is an official image from a LEGO instruction booklet from this set in front of you right now, the Parisian Restaurant. This highly deceptive LEGO instruction page can be found in the second booklet for this set, and it's step number seven. You'll notice that there is a two by one brick that appears to be kind of being situated on top of the fireplace, on top of that flame. However, if you look at it from a very close angle, you'll notice that it, there's two little studs behind that fireplace where this brick will be placed. It's a very unclear angle, you can barely see where the brick is going, and from far away, it definitely looks like this brick is going on top of the flames, hence it can be kind of confusing if you were building it and just glanced at it and saw that you were supposed to put a 1x2 or a 2x1 on top of the flame piece. Oh, and it also doesn't help that the next step doesn't even show that that brick is there. If you zoom in, it appears that there is green behind the flame, although there should be that semi-darkish gray color of the brick piece that we were supposed to have just put there. And so that would make it even more confusing because then you'd think that there was supposed to be and sort of like an olive green color brick behind there. And then you'd wonder, well, where did the dark gray brick that we were supposed to put in just go? The LEGO NASA Apollo Saturn V brought back a peculiar building technique that most LEGO fans had considered to be one of the banned LEGO techniques. Now for context, this includes any sort of building where you put two LEGO bricks together in order to create, let's say, a double-sided brick, or wedging a brick perpendicular to another brick. 
For the set itself, the main attraction, the rocket itself, was completely fine, however the lunar lander was where this interesting building technique was placed. If you look at the American flag, it is wedged in between two studs on that hexagonal base plate. Most likely this was probably one of the last resorts for the LEGO designer as he was trying to manipulate LEGO pieces in order to create the scale that he was looking for since these are micro figs. Nonetheless, this technique was not new, but rather forgotten for many years. I mean, take for instance this 1978 LEGO Castle set here called Yellow Castle, and the 1x2 tiles that are placed on the very top of the horses. Dating back even further, there was the 1976 Cowboy set. This was before the original LEGO minifigure was actually developed. And also the Stagecoach set, also from 1976. And so I guess you could say that this was initially a surprise to us that LEGO reverted back to this building technique, a technique that they really had been encouraging people not to do, to not push stress on the elements in the incorrect way, or therefore, you know, using these sort of band LEGO techniques or band building techniques. This past year was a semi-rough year for LEGO Advent Calendars, more specifically the LEGO Harry Potter Advent Calendar, because of the different tweets that LEGO received from customers and LEGO fans who have opened up the different days of the Advent Calendar only to realize that they are greeted with something completely different than what they were supposed to receive. This first tweet here says, I think I got a really special turkey today in my Harry Potter Advent Calendar. And in it, instead of a turkey, there is a croissant, a pie, and three cookies. Now it turns out that the two days seem to have been flipped and put in the wrong compartment because you get the pie and the croissant on a separate day and therefore they were just switched. However, there was another instance where LEGO received another tweet saying, I bought a LEGO Harry Potter advent calendar. Seems to have a Star Wars crossover. And instead of getting Professor McGonagall, this individual got a Star Wars Imperial Gunner. Yes, a LEGO Star Wars minifigure in the LEGO Harry Potter Advent Calendar. I for one have never had a problem with Advent Calendars, they all seem to be pretty reliable to me, but if you guys have ever had a similar experience where something's been in the wrong spot or you got the wrong build or figure, let me know if they comment down below. Up next is one of my favorite mistakes in this video because of its interesting outcome. Now, this takes place in the Dojo Showdown LEGO Ninjago set for the Tournament of Elements. Now, before you look closer at this set, it's important to familiarize yourself with these two characters. We have the minifigure of Slevin over on the left and Chope over on the right. They're both anachondre, they both look very similar. However, Slevin over on the left has that slight white printing on his head, so keep that in mind. And now let's look at this set. If you look at the bottom right hand corner, we can see an image of Chope. However, if you look at the very top of the box, it says Slevin, but has the same image. Now it doesn't help that the instruction booklet makes it even more confusing, because this is Slevin in front of you. And so to recap, we have images of Chope on the box art, but yet labeled as Slevin, and then we have Slevin in the instruction booklet. So which one is actually in the set? Well, supposedly, the official set is supposed to have the Slevin minifigure you see over on the right. However, this unnamed individual from a LEGO forum got both of them in the same set. Now, here's what he said. He said that then I see that both minifigures are surprisingly included in the box. They both came out from the original part bag. And so from this, we can conclude that LEGO knew about this box mistake before they even put all the pieces into the part bags that go into each set. I mean, in the end, I like how LEGO handled this, they owned up to their mistake and ended up just including both minifigures in the box to avoid confusion, and in the end these lucky individuals, you know, got two anachondra instead of just one. Once again though, this mistake was not entirely new. Take for instance this 2018 LEGO Batman set, in which on the bottom right hand corner of the box it shows Batman, the Batman minifigure, with a Batarang, however there is no such piece in the set itself. Similarly, in 2007, so going back one more year, we had this LEGO Bionicle set with two different colors of eyes. It was red on the set box images and then blue in the instruction booklet. And lastly, in 2005, the LEGO Viking set here showed a discrepancy in the type of axe blade. You'll notice the blade that goes entirely around the handle over on the left, while the one on the right simply just clips on, and that's the newer version that we all know of today you most likely have in your collection. 
Let's move on to another Lego Harry Potter set. We're not talking about the advent calendar this time, but rather just one of the mainstream sets that came out. This is the Hogwarts Clock Tower set, and uh, yeah, it's a clock tower, but something's wrong with this clock. Can you identify what's wrong? Yeah, it's completely rotated the wrong way. You'll notice that the number 12 is actually where the number 3 should be, and therefore at the very top where number 12 should be, there's the number 9. Here's an even closer image, and you can clearly see that it's rotated by 90 degrees clockwise. However, I looked in the instruction booklet, and the instruction booklet has it up correctly with 12 at the top, and obviously all the other numbers where you'd expect a regular clock to have them. And so I guess for me, this is just a very ironic situation because this is called the clock tower, and yet the images from the box of the clock on the tower are not necessarily in the right position nor correct. This is a very interesting mistake. Alright, now let's talk about LEGO catalogs because these aren't completely error-free either. You'll notice this one here, do you guys notice something weird about the set in front of you right now? This is from the Winter Village Station set, which is one of the LEGO creator sets under the Winter Village line. However, if you look at the build over on the right, the farthest to the left of the little shack where the arrow is pointing, there is no roof. There's just no roof there. And if you look at the set image over on the left, the official one, there is of course a roof there. So somehow that roof piece got taken off and yet they took the picture for this catalog with the roof off and didn't ever notice that. Now honestly, I really dislike being critical of LEGO just because LEGO's quality control is probably one of the best out of every brand in the world. And whenever they do make mistakes, they're very few and far between. Notice how the sets we're looking at this video are from all different years, dating back a very long time ago even for some. But nonetheless, this one's from a year later. In 2018, there's another mistake here with this set. If you haven't already caught it, it's one of the poles on the windows. For some reason, there just isn't one of the poles there. I don't know, once again, I have no idea where that piece went or how it didn't get put on because that's a very large piece, but nonetheless, it somehow didn't make it on the set. Moving on, we have a LEGO Movie 2 set. This is the Shimmer and Shine Sparkle Spa. Now, from my original video that I did, you guys may know that I talked a lot about LEGO Movie sets because they seem to be more on the rushed side where more mistakes were likely to occur and this one's instruction booklet here is just a disaster, I'll be honest. I've never seen so many mistakes in a LEGO instruction booklet than this one. In front of you right now, these images are courtesy of BSD1975, and he took a picture here of steps 11 to 12 where there's obviously something going on. There's just a bunch of bricks added that are not called for in the instructions, and it's not just these two steps. There's also step number 81 and 82 where there's also a jump. It's not as noticeable, but obviously there are a lot of bricks towards the front end of the build that you're constructing right here that are, you know, just they just magically appear there. This next set I just wanted to throw in real fast as we're on the topic of instructions. This set is the cargo train back from 1985, and I just wanted to highlight how confusing the instructions were back then. I mean, look at... You can't even follow really what's happening here, and then you get to the end and realize that you were building two different legs for this platform. But honestly, try and follow it with your eyes and how you would be building it. It's definitely not as streamlined as the instruction booklets we have nowadays. Alright, now we have gotten to this set, which is by far probably one of the craziest and most mysterious mistakes in this video. I have no idea really how it happened, but just listen to this. So, this is the LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle back from 2010, and it comes with a whole plethora of minifigures you guys can see at the bottom of the box. Now, one of those minifigures is indubitably Voldemort. Now, from the box, he looks perfectly fine. He's in black robes, which is exactly how he should appear in his minifigure form. However, from this product image here, look at Voldemort on the very bottom. He's turned green. I don't know why he has green robes. He's not supposed to have green robes. He's still supposed to have black ones. I mean, hear them side by side. The original product images from the front of the box were perfectly fine, but the one of the set with the white background was not. 
For this next set, we're taking it all the way back to Legends of Chima, and for those of you guys who were fans of this theme, you guys will really enjoy this one. This is from the Gorilla Legend Beast, and everything looks totally fine from these product images until you get to this one from the semi side of the build. And you'll notice that the gorilla's left arm, that ball and socket joint, it doesn't really connect in there. It's kind of just loosely hanging there or just positioned there, almost as if it was photoshopped in. There's only one side of the clasp. I mean, for context, here is the box art over on the left, and it's totally fine. While the one on the right, which is the exact same image, I'm not sure what happened to it, but it's just missing that other part of the ball and socket joint. And that's going to wrap up today's video. Comment down below if you guys have ever experienced anything weird with your own LEGO sets. And also, if you guys haven't checked out my original video, check it out on screen right now. Let me know with a like rating if you guys enjoyed today's video. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new. As always, I'm Spitbricks. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video coming very soon.